Roman Reigns versus Logan Paul for the Uru Championship. NXT Yellow and Black back? And Malachi Black says goodbye to professional wrestling for now. All of this and more on this episode of A Shot of Brew. What's going on, my lovely party people? It's your bro, Yellow Boy, and I'm here again like I never left before for Bros, Brews, and Botches, giving you a new Shot of Brew on this September 18th, 2022. You know, this is a show where I bring you a shot of news to you, the people, you people. But before we get started, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Click that notification bell so that you know when the bros are brewing something new up. But without further ado, let's check out some news. Roman Reigns and Logan Paul are scheduled to face each other at Crown Jewel. So if you watched SmackDown this past Friday, you would have seen Logan Paul to start the show. He made comments alluding to Roman Reigns being on his impulsive podcast earlier in the week and the remarks that Paul made after the show had concluded. Now Paul was out to invite the tribal chief, our head of the table, to a press conference on September the 17th. Now he was confronted by returning Paul Heyman and the bloodline, of course minus Roman Reigns but it was the setup for Reigns and Logan Paul to meet face to face in Las Vegas for the press conference. Now the press conference reportedly opened with Triple H announcing the match for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship and stating that the bout is a spectacle that has never been seen before. Now he was also pushing Paul or pushing that Paul could do the unthinkable like to hope not but Logan Paul has only had two professional wrestling matches in his career now if you remember cast your minds back he did he did the first match in at Wrestlemania teaming with the Miz take on the Mysterios and then the last one that he did was the one at SummerSlam against the Miz so he's only done the two matches for his whole entire career, but Crown Jewel will take place in Riyadh, South or South Saudi Arabia, on November the fifth. So there's still time for the build on this. Please, God, don't let Logan Paul win the Uru Championship. But moving on, will NXT be headed back to the black and gold? Now, on Tuesday, September 13th, after NXT 2.0's anniversary show celebrating one year of 2.0, Shawn Michaels was overheard com completing a voiceover, voiceover narration to a video package where he has said NXT has been and always will be about developing the superstars of tomorrow. They will always acknowledge the past and that NXT is constantly evolving with a focus on the future. However, it was at the end of this that brought more intrigue. Now, Michael said that wrestlers will develop and move on, but NXT's message to the fans will never change. We are NXT. And as that statement was being said, the 2.0 logo was replaced and superimposed by a new logo, very reminiscent of the black and yellow, black and gold NXT, where except it was more white, You'll probably see what I'm talking about in this general vicinity here. But while the NXT, while, while there hasn't been any confirmation on a return to the NXT of old, fans are very hopeful with Triple H at the head and HBK over creative that NXT will go back to looking the way that it used to and leave some of what 2.0 brought. Um, one thing that NXT has already looking like NXT of old are ratings. Now this past week on their 2.0 anniversary show, according to Showbiz, Show Buzz Daily, the show had an audience of 728,000, which is nearly 6.5% improvement over the previous week's Worlds Collide special. 
and the best number that they've had since the Halloween Havoc edition last October. Unfortunately, fans won't be able to see any immediate changes to NXT as this coming week's episode of NXT was pre-taped, but maybe there'll be more changes made in upcoming episodes. Moving on, Malachi Black is taking a break from professional wrestling. Now, there were various reports in previous weeks of AEW star Malachi Black asking for his release. Some reports stated that he was denied his release, while others went on to state that he was issued a conditional release, but there were no specifics to the conditions of that release or contract. Now, while some speculated that Black would return to a Triple H ran WWE, there are rumors that Malachi Black would be leaving wrestling altogether due to various reasons he had um, that had not been confirmed. There was also the event that took place at All Out on an off-air gesture where Black was seen taking a bow at the top of the ramp and blowing the fans a kiss in a move that at least kind of confirmed speculation about Malachi Black leaving AEW. Now, in the passing days here, the recent passing days, uh, more has been found out about the, the speculation with Black leaving. Now, there was a match last night, Black faced Kid Bandit at Prestige Wrestling's Perseverance event in Pomona, California, and the following was transcribed by comicbook.com is what he said in the ring post-match. He goes on to say, quote, I understand all of you have questions. Black began, what I'm doing, where I'm going. On a serious note, understand that in due time, I will answer the majority of these questions. However, for the last 22 years of my life, I have never not once taken a step back and recalibrated my life and took a chance to look back at all of the stuff I've done in ring, but the stuff I've done out of the ring. I've never done that because I always had this one attitude, excuse me, I've never done, I've always, I've never done that because I always had this attitude of horse blinders. I've done that for my entire professional career because I had this one attitude towards wrestling that you have to think globally, not locally. If you think locally, you get stuck in one place. That applies to everything. If you want to branch out, you have to focus on the little things. As cliche as that, that sounds, it's what got me here to the United States. He continues, for the 22 years that I've given my absolute everything, please allow me to take a few weeks, maybe a few months, to recalibrate myself and put it in perspective. I promise you this is not goodbye. It's we'll see each other soon. So that was said last night at Prestige Wrestling, but today, September 18th, he did post on his social media. And I'm gonna read all the social media, po the, the letter that he read, that he made on social media for you. So, it starts off by saying to all, firstly, thank you for all your messages. Know they are being read and appreciated. With all the turmoil going on in the landscape of professional wrestling, I took the time to think of my words, but also needed to wait until conversations between mine and AEW's camp had come to a conclusion. Firstly, I dislike reading parts of my private conversations between myself and AEW in regards to my mental well-being on the internet. These conversations were private and not meant to be shared with the public. As by now, most people realize I am a very private person and do not feel the need to have stuff like this out on the internet. If you've been following me longer than a cup of coffee, you're aware I've spoken about them prior, but would like to be the one deciding when this finds its way to the public and not through someone else's mouth. As with anything through the lips of someone else, that story gets distorted. He goes on to say in the next post, second part of it. Secondly, to be in line with the above, 
they also need contrast. I did, I did indeed ask for my, my release. The last two years of my life have landed to a lot of setbacks. Landed to a lot of setbacks, sorry. Both me and my wife have been affected by uncontrollable actions from the outside that resulted in loss of life, medical setbacks, career jeopardizing, the suicide of a close friend, and a close family member almost losing their life. The experience, the experiencing an injury that I was sure it's the end that will that sure was the end of my career. I spent every week going through several sessions of rehab, dry needling, and therapy just to be able to walk and compete. Now, this being the tip of the iceberg, and with the combination of the promises in my professional field that were not upheld, which resulted in a combination of all these things to complete demoralization of life and career, this decision had been in my mind for the past six months. It's hard to really put a finger and say this was the moment it all went wrong, but I can tell you after many years that I have learned from a rational point of view to see when I need to hit the brakes which what this is. And then lastly, perhaps in my mind settles on certain things and processes the last two years a bit, diff bit better. I will convey via a different platform than written out what that exacts were that happened and have a more informed conversation about them. For now, that I am good. For now, know that I am good and I am taking for the first time in 22 years, a few months to recalibrate the last two decades of my life. Lastly, I have read a few narratives online in regards to my release, mental health, and my personal life that I can summarize swiftly. If it didn't come from me, it didn't happen. Stuff about conditional rel releases, stuff in my marriage, or using said mental health to leverage the other when, as I said before, that part wasn't even going to be part of the public conversation or false. My marriage is fine. I am fine. It is just time to make sure those things stay that way. Once again, I appreciate your support and we will see each other soon enough. MB. I know that was a lot of reading, but it had to be read. So there you have it from Malachi Black's mouth and from his social media. So the bros want to wish Malachi Black all the best and hope that he gets the break that he so truly needs. And please, for all you watching, please don't speculate to the exact why he needs a break and just be positive and supportive about his recovery. Thank you, management. Okay, so moving on. From leaving a possible toxic environment to just plain toxic, the social media feud between EC3 and Patrick Clark heated up this week. Okay, so look, I'm not gonna go into defending either person, nor will I go into detail about all the offenses that Patrick Clark committed. That's what Google is for. Just wanted you to know. Uh, go search it if you wanna know, because some of it is what we would consider just gross, but I'm not here to cast judgment. I'm here just to report some of the tea. But this week, Patrick Clark, or Velveteen Dream, as he was known in NXT, was allegedly released from jail this week, or incarceration this week, and had some choice things to say towards one EC3. As there was a rumor going around, that had gone, gone around for quite a while about a party that was hosted at EC3's home a few years ago. Now Clark set up a, it was, it was said, Here's the, the allegation was that Clark set up a cell phone in the bathroom in order to take pictures of people's genitalia, mostly the, the guys. Um, so this past week in an IG live video, Clark retaliated, first off denying setting up a phone in the bathroom. And he also stated that there was another wrestler, a coworker that had gone through his phone and looked to see that there weren't any pictures in there. He goes on to insinuate that EC3 had powder on the table, so cocaine's a hell of a drug. And furthermore, went on to call him an a-hole. So um, it was a lot to unpack. 
but not to go without a rebuttal, as one who would control their own narrative, as EC3 would, EC3 responded issuing, issuing the following to PW Insider. Quote, in life, I forgive everyone for everything that has been done to me. I personally have never failed a drug test from my employer, any employer, nor have been arrested for drug usage, paraphernalia, assault, battery, or any inappropriate behavior. My forgiveness includes Patrick Clark for setting up a video recording device in the bathroom of my home. As far as any other accusations and allegations against him, I hope he finds the help he needs, unquote. There's been no other further interactions that's been made between the two. Both Clark and EC3 have been noteworthy for different reasons. Clark for his continued run-ins with uh, law enforcement for various reasons, and EC3 for the less than popular control your narrative promotion that he heads. However, the less I say about either of the two, the better. Well, let's move on. But in some light news, and to end this episode, love is in the air between two wrestlers. Oh, oh, no, 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 not them, not them, not them, not, 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 not those guys. Get that picture out of here. Wait, no, not that picture either. Whoa, whoa, not that picture either. No, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Okay, there we go. Thank you, thank you, editor. Good job. So, yesterday, on, on her social media accounts, Mandy Rose, real name, Amanda Sakamano, hope I, hopefully I said that right, Sakamano, announced her engagement to former NXT performer uh, Tino Sabatelli, whose real name is Sabatino Piscitelli. Not, not Italian, so sorry if I butchered that, guys. But there have been no word on a wedding date. But on behalf of all the simps out there in the world, the bros want to say, Dang, missed my chance. <laughs> They're kidding, I'm just kidding. But seriously, though, um, from the bros, we want to send out a warm congratulations to the couple on their engagement and wish them well as they prepare for their marriage whenever that shall be. What? Uh, that is it, you guys. We want to just first off thank you for checking out another episode with your boy here. Um, also, remember, you can go and follow the channel on all of our social media sites. I'll put the link tree in the description below where you can go find us at. You can, if you want to come find me, you can come find me on my Twitter account. You can find me at Badass Yellow Boy. That's B A D A Z Z underscore Y E L L A B O I or whatever just popped in right. Oh, no, it's right here. Whatever popped in right here. Um, you can find Over Here Boy on everything at Over Here Boy, all one word. Darn good sausage. Um, Y'all know the routine. Y'all been following long enough. Again, thank you guys. Um, if you've been following the channel from the beginning, thank you. If you just now subscribe, thank you. Go tell a friend. Let, let, them, let them know about it. And then soon at the end of this, there will be two boxes right here. Go check them out. They're, they're check, whatever it is that's up here, go check it out. It's maybe either uh, another one of these shot of brews or it could be a... 60 second sips from over here boy where he gives you all your information about craft beer or whatever it is that you want to leave in the comment box for him leave him comments he will try any beer as, le as long as it's not toilet water or toilet toilet wine he'll check he'll try it out he may even try out toilet wine so go over to that playlist and go check out those 60 second sips and go holler at your boy over here boy but Thank you once again. It's been a shot of brew with Yellow Boy. And until we meet again, take a shot for you and we'll holler.